Hello there. Uh, here I'm going to give you, I'm going to correct uh, the errors that exist in the previous video, uh, which I tried to explain how a simple chemical reactor can be simulated. So in this video, I am not talk about uh, the fundamental terms like rate of disappearance and rate of formulation or what we call rate constants. So given these three simultaneous equations we talked about earlier in, this, uh, in the previous video, two of them are the rate of disappearance and one of them is the rate of formulation. Uh, this is that we are going to want to produce and these are the given A and B in grams. We talk about like this. So in continuous simulation, we will compute this values, these equations, for a period t. So that means we will divide this the entire period t by small amount of time, which is known as a change of t, and then we will repeatedly compute those equations for n times, where n equals to the bigger t divided by change of t. So like that. So let me correct the code directly. So this is the code that we that I have already written in the previous video. So that this is our direct constants, and I said that these are the values of a and b and c. And here, since these equations are simultaneous. <coughs> These equations are simultaneous. In order to compute the next, for the next time, for A, A equals to A plus this formula of rate of disappearance times change of T. And for the B, I have the same formula, but here I have already updated A over here. So, for to compute the B, this program do will take A as for the new value. So because A has been changed, so B right now is take the value of the newly updated value. So to avoid that one, let me introduce a new variables A1, B1, and C1. So that to compute B1, we don't use A1. Or to compute C1, we don't use A1 or B1. These are the new values. Or you can say this is A of I, B of I, and C of I. Like this. So that this A or C of I is not dependent on B of I or A of I. A of I only depends on A, C, and B. Like uh, B of I is depends on only A and B, C. So then after computing this A of I, B of I, and C of I, I will assign A. Now this A will can hold A of I. And B will hold the value of B of I. And lastly, C will be updated to C of I. Because here in the flowchart, as you can see, we need the newly value and stores in the array. That's all. So when I run this one, I will get the correctly results. The corrected results. Let me show you once again. So these are the correctly values A, 96, B, 46, and C becomes 8. In the previous video, if you look at C, we are 7 point some kind of thing. That is a small error fraction, but when we go to, as the time increases, the error will be bigger. And at lastly, if, if you remember that, you find 87 grams. But here, we, we now have 93 grams, which you have a big error. So 
make sure that you have corrected the code like this one so this is is uh, how to simulate a simple chemical reactor and thank you for now and for the next we are going to talk about a discrete simulation system so in particular we will talk about a queuing system simulation till there see ya